Good evening, church. Good evening. Welcome to those of you gathered here at Second Christian, and a special welcome to those of you who are gathering with us online for this Ash Wednesday service as we begin our Lenten journey. Um, we will be um, inviting you to come forward to receive the imposition of ashes um, at, toward the end of the service. Um, it is an invitation to all. It is not a requirement. Um, the traditional placement for the ashes is on the forehead, but if you would like to have your hand marked, we can do that as well. Um, and if you're worshiping with us from home, uh, please, uh, please join us in this um, ritual. Uh, if you, it's a little cold probably to run out and get some dirt right now, but, um, but uh, you can mark yourself with some, some water or um, whatever, what have you around the house um, and uh, just remember that you are God's beloved dust and to God's beloved dust you will return. There is no hospitality following worship tonight. We will just um, go on our ways back out into the cold, cold night. Um, but thank you again for choosing to be here this evening. Our call to community is printed in our bulletins. Let us read responsively. Gather the people, prepare a holy meeting. Today we acknowledge the fragility and preciousness of life. Gather the people, return to God with ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. We rend our hearts not our clothes, we open ourselves to the pain of the world with compassion and grace in the way of Jesus. Gather the people, seek the Holy One gathered with us. We offer a sacrifice of praise, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. We are here to worship. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, number 141, A Stable Lamp is Lighted.
God invites us to come to worship as ourselves, offering us a new beginning day by day and week by week. Trusting in God, let us pray together for transformation and new life. Holy One, have mercy on us according to your faithful love. Create in us a heart for love, justice, and righteousness. Replace any guilt or shame with the hope of new life teeming with mercy and grace. Send your spirit to be our companion in the choices we make and in ways we, we relate to one another. Let the hypocrisy be offensive to us, and honesty, humility, and truth become irresistible in our being. You have turned our dust into something marvelous. Let us honor you by living our days in faith, in connection, and in covenant with you and human siblings. Renew us, O God, we pray. Amen. Children of God, the faithful and loving embrace of their creator knows our hidden places and wants our truth. The comforter knows our struggles and sadness, restoring joy and creating newness of life in us. The God who delivers saves us from injustice, hopelessness, and violence of the world by renewing our spirit, strengthening our voice, and receiving our broken spirits as the canvas of a new creation. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Clearly, we should have sung that because a half of you were mouthing the words as Alan played. A beautiful one. Our scripture lesson this evening is taken from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. It is the assigned reading for Ash Wednesday. Let us listen for the word of God. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here ends the reading of the lesson. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. I have always found these words from Matthew's gospel to be an odd choice for Ash Wednesday. A day when we fast and pray, maybe, A day when we think about what we might give up or take on for the next 40 days, maybe. A day when we are marked on the forehead with ashes and oil for all the world to see. We gather here on a Wednesday evening and ring the bell and people are wondering, what the heck is going on? It almost seems like we're trying to call call attention to ourselves. And maybe we are. Lent has begun. Lent is the season of preparation that leads us to Easter. It is the 40 days that recalls Jesus' time in the wilderness of fasting and praying. We'll hear about that on Sunday. It echoes back to the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the desert, their time of preparation for their entry into the promised land. In the early church, Lent began as a time of repentance and reflection and humility, a time that invited spiritual practices and other disciplines that might form believers form Christians that might draw disciples not only closer to Christ, but also to the way of sacrificial love modeled by Jesus. At the same time, the early Christians held on to the tradition of celebrating Easter every Sunday. During Lent, the Sundays are not counted as part of it. They Uh, are Sundays, as I like to say, during Lent, not Sundays of Lent or in Lent. Those little Easter's provide a rhythm reminding us after six days 
that suffering is not the goal, that giving up is not the goal, or even the main point of the story. Lent is our yearly reminder that giving of oneself in love of neighbor, love of God, is doable when we commit to it. And Lent gives us that reminder again and again that grace is always available, always waiting, always there to help us start anew if, and if we're honest, when we fall short. In that spirit, sometimes we talk about taking on something during Lent, taking on a new practice, rather than just letting something go, giving up chocolate or sweets or not coffee. No, I couldn't do that. Um, And it seems like somehow we've framed these choices as distinct, that we have either, either we'll take something on or we'll give something up. But those choices actually are very connected, aren't they? Because when we say yes to one thing, we'll most likely have to say no to something else. So the question is not whether we will give up something or take something on. We will choose. We do it every day. You chose to be here tonight. You chose to bundle up and get into the cold car and drive here. Those of you who are worshiping from home, you chose to be here to make time in your evening to be here. We make choices. But the act of choosing can actually help us discern what needs to be discarded, what is maybe in the way of the things that we choose to make space for what we will gain. So for this season of Lent, I am inviting you to say no. The world is filled with so many things that we can do without. We can, you know, the easy ones. We can do without war and hate and racism. We can do without anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. We can do without genocide or hunger or homelessness. We can do without hypocrisy. But maybe we can do without a new pair of shoes. Maybe we can do without something that gives us joy during Lent and make room for something else to happen. So let's say no to all those things that we can do about so that we can make room to say yes to what really matters. Because on this Ash Wednesday, this unique Ash Wednesday, which falls on Valentine's Day, um, I learned today three times this century it will happen, and it's all been um, ten, five years back and five years forward. So we're going to do this again in a few years or it's going to happen again in a few years. On this Valentine's Day, when you will be invited to come forward and confront your mortality, it's an especially good day to remember that we are beloved. A good day to hear once again, clearly and unmistakably, God's I love you, spoken to each and every one of us. Can you hear that? 
Can you hear God say, I love you? When we hear that, we know again the truth of that. Those words are written on our hearts because that, my friends, is the one thing that we can't do without. God's love and sharing that with others. And that, my friends, will change the world. And it will start right here. Amen. For our prayers tonight, I am going to share something that I'm, I believe probably some of you have heard this already, um, but uh, uh, Reverend Marin Tarabasi wrote an improv on 1 Corinthians 13, and that's going to be our prayer tonight. But before we get there, um, I would uh, love to hear who should be in our prayers tonight and through this week. I invite prayers for Eric. Um, Um, yeah, so that concert is at Noble High School on Saturday at 2 o'clock, and it, it's actually funding a uh, Rotary Peace Scholars group. So um, there's some information about that downstairs um, if you would like to go. And there's like five or six uh, um, artists on that, on that show. Other? Don. Christine and Janet. People suffering with mental illness, depression. June. June. We will hold these uh, people in our prayers and prayers for peace. Darwin and Sarah. And Neil and Chris, yes. Let us hear these words prayerfully tonight. If I speak in tongues of justice or spirituality, but do not have ashes, I am a self-congratulating vigil, a Sunday service inspired by itself. If I have social media outreach, a labyrinth in the church garden, Bible study in the brew pub, and if I have a capital campaign to remove pews, put in church chairs, and even add a coffee shop, but do not have ashes. I am nothing. If I give to church-wide offerings and go on mission trips so that I may boast, but do not have ashes, I gain nothing. Ashes are awkward. Ashes are dirty. Ashes, like love, are not envious, boastful, arrogant, or rude. Ashes do not insist on a perfect Lent. They do not even need to be in church or be a gimmick getting folks to church. They do not inventory wrongdoing, especially the wrongdoing of others, but rejoice in the precious now the very fragility of life. 
Ashes bear love, believe in love, hope in the possibility of forgiveness for everyone, endure even times of lovelessness. Forgiveness never ends. As for spiritual practices, they will come to an end. As for precious old hymns and passionate praise songs, they will grow quiet. As for theology and faith formation, believe me, it will shift and change again. For churches are always reaching for a part of things while those who flee church reach for another part. But when the full forgiveness comes, it will look more like Valentine's Day. When I was a child, I said, I love you. I cut out pink and red hearts. I sent them to everyone, even the bullies. But when I became an adult, I decided to make it more complicated. Now in our churches and lives, we have become too fond of mirrors, but someday we will see each other face to smudged face. Now I love only in part, then I will love fully, even as I have been fully loved. Today, ashes, dust, and a child's pink paper art abide, these three. But the greatest of these is the heart. Hear all our prayers tonight, loving God, for we lift them up in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We have come once again to the, the offering part, the response, the, um, if you will, so what of our being here. Tonight, I invite you to search yourself in, as we begin Lent to see what it is you have to offer, something you can give away so that you might be able to receive something new in this season of your life. Let us worship God with all that we are and all that we have.
drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I own. Dear Lord, I give myself away. It's all that I can do. Let us bless all our gifts. Generous God, we thank you for opening our hearts to those in need, for providing abundantly for our needs, and for using us to water your garden and as menders of brokenness. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to do a little litany now. I will um, say some words and we will sing a response. And the response is written in your, the words to the response are, are in your bulletin. And I think you will find it's a familiar tune. And Alan is going to play it once now and then we'll sing it and then we'll begin. In the softness of evening, in the solace of silence, we come to you, O Lord. We come for acceptance, we come for community, we come for forgiveness and love. In the serenity of day's end, in the restfulness of worship, we come to you, O Lord. We come to you for respite. We come to you for completion. We come to you for forgiveness and love. quiet of the night, in the comfort of darkness, we come to you, O Lord. We come for peace, we come for comfort, we come for forgiveness and love. Live. 
listen to me. We come, O Lord of light, seeking the illumination of your word. We come for the path we cannot find. We come for the life we do not have. We come to you for our lives are death and you alone have breath and being. In your mercy, you call us to the path of repentance. You remind us in your word that we are earth and dust, but you promise to lift the poor from dust. Come, my friends, and receive the sign of repentance. And remember that you are God's beloved dust, and to God's beloved dust you shall return.
I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing hymn number 200, What Wondrous Love Is This? Please be seated. For our benediction tonight, I'm going to read some words from Jan Richardson. She has entitled, Blessing the Dust. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face downward the wind, and be scattered to the four corners, or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. 
This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked not for sorrow. And let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and the stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge we bear. My friends, go in peace on this night and know that you are beloved. Amen.